This video was made possible by The Great Courses Plus. Start your free trial by clicking the link in the description below. People are suffering. What are they suffering? They think they're suffering their life. No. People are suffering something that happened ten years ago, something that happened ten days ago, something that happened day before yesterday, they're still suffering. Or they're able to suffer what may happen day after tomorrow already. They're not suffering life, they're just suffering their memory and their imagination. Two greatest faculties that human beings have is this, a fantastic sense of memory, a vivid sense of memory and an absolutely wonderful sense of imagination. This only human being has, these are our two basic faculties. These two things you started suffering. So what you're saying is, evolution has made a mistake with you, please make me an earthworm once again, so that you can just at least become eco-friendly. See, people are always looking, all this is fine but what's the takeaway? They want a commandment, we are talking about consciousness. Commandments won't fly. Commandments means you're trying to fix your life. Consciousness means you want to liberate your life. My intention is you must liberate your life. People come and say, Sadhguru, please teach us how to control my mind. Say, you want your mind controlled or liberated? Oh, yes, yes, liberated, but how to control? Because they think, that intelligence is a serious problem and it's been in their lives. So what is the solution? If you remove a part of your brain, you will be fine. <laughs> You're es essentially complaining, I wish I had the brain of an earthworm, this human brain I am not able to handle. Yes, that is a fact. So your problem is just this, you have an intelligence for which you don't have a stable enough platform and that's why yoga to create a stable platform so that your intelligence works for you. Right now, you may call it so many things, so many exotic names have come up, stress, tension, anxiety, depression, madness, all kinds of things. All this essentially what it means is, your intelligence has turned against you, that's all. You can give any number of reasons, but essentially your intelligence has turned against you. If your intelligence was working for you, would you create blissfulness or misery? Why your intelligence has turned against you? There's no stable enough base. So the entire yogic system is about this, that you create a stable base so that your intelligence works for you. If your intelligence turns against you, no power in the universe is going to save you, you are a done thing. When I say I'm thinking this, you… another word, another way of saying it is, I'm making up this, I'm making up that. You can make up whatever you want, as long as you enjoy it. See, if you become what you make up, unfortunate, isn't it? You… your thoughts belong to you or you belong to the thoughts, you must make up your mind. They are fantastic. Only thing is, fantastic things mishandled can kill you. A car can kill you, it's a wonderful thing, an automobile. If you handle it irresponsibly, it kills you. Every possibility is like this. Every possibility, if you do not harness it, it becomes a problem. So the same goes for your cerebral capability. If you do not harness it, it's a serious problem. Eighty percent of the human beings are simply suffering. They don't need any outside help, they're on self-help. See, suppose somebody is here, lying down. If I call him, he doesn't respond. If I shake him, he doesn't respond. If I poke him, he doesn't respond. What do you think of him? He's dead. So death means you have lost all ability to respond. So what does life mean to you? Your ability to respond. So now you make up your mind, how alive you want to be. Fifty percent will do. If you are hundred percent alive, it's fantastic to be alive. If you're dead, it's good, at least for others I'm saying. But if you're half alive, it's torture, isn't it? So whether I keep you half alive or you keep yourself half alive, whichever way it's torture, isn't it? If I do it, I'm inflicting the torture on you. If you do it to yourself, it's self-torture. But whether I do it or you do it, it still is torture, it's suffering. So tell me, how many people in this world are being tortured by somebody else? How many are actually physically being tortured by somebody else? Unfortunately, it happens to a few people. It may be a certain number of people, but definitely not eighty percent of the population. Eighty percent of the population are experts in self-torture. It's like, if I give you a sharp knife, if you hold it on the wrong side, wrong end of the knife, if you hold it, 
The harder you hold it, the more it hurts, isn't it? That's all. You're suffering your own intelligence, you're suffering your own possibilities. See, all human experience comes from within, isn't it? I don't know what kind of geniuses thought these things. I know in America there must be a million books telling you how to milk happiness from something else or somebody else <laughs> But all human experience is generated from within. What comes from within you must be the way you want it, isn't it? What comes from around you may not be the way you want it. But what comes from within you must be the way you want it. If whatever happens within you the way you want it, will you be blissed out or miserable? Your joy and misery comes from within you. Right now, you can look at everything joyfully. What is a problem, try to find a solution to it. Or you, look at, you can look at everything mis with great sense of misery and you become part of the problem. This is a choice you have. Either you become part of the solution or part of the problem. If you are joyful, you will become part of the solution. If you are miserable, you are also part of the problem, isn't it? See, all this is happening because people are not conscious that they are mortal. They think other people die. They don't know consciously that I will die. As I sit here, my clock is ticking away. What is ticking away is not the clock, life is just ticking away. If you're conscious of this, you would manage your life in the best possible way. You think you have eternal amount of time, so you have time for all kinds of rubbish. If you look at this generation, let's say two generations ago, how many people thought they will go to heaven? And today how many people think they're going to heaven and they're preparing for it? has come down dramatically, eighty percent heavens have collapsed in people's minds. Still they don't dare to say that because there is still fear, but in their minds the aspiration of going to heaven is largely collapsed. So when he heavens collapse, what will human beings do? They will try to find it here, which is a very good thing. But if you don't show them any way to find a heaven within themselves, that is when at least eighty to eighty-five percent of the population today is on alcohol or some kind of drug happening simply because they are trying to build their own little heaven. Because the other heaven that was promised for a long time has collapsed in their minds. We have come to a place where to grow our food, we need chemicals. To be healthful, we need chemicals. Today, seventy percent of the population is on prescription medication of some sort. To be peaceful, we need chemicals. To be joyful, we need chemicals. To be ecstatic, of course, you have ecstasy. So we are going towards chemicals in a huge way. The water that you drink is full of chemicals, the air that you breathe is like that, and the food that you eat is like that. So if ninety percent of humanity goes into chemical consumption, consciously or unconsciously, if they consume a lot of it, the next generation that we produce will be of a lesser quality than who we are. That's a crime against humanity. But today we are coming to a place where we could be producing a next generation which is less than us. Once that happens, we have done something very negative against the fundamental life process. This is not a moral issue for me. What I am saying is, the important thing about life, whether it's a grasshopper out there or you, both of us are striving to be the fullest possible life that we can be. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper, a human being is trying to be a full-fledged human being. So suppose you cut off one of grasshopper's legs which is supposed to hop, the hopping leg if you take it off, have you enhanced its life, I'm asking you? No. So similarly for a human being, if you take away any of his faculties in any way, even temporarily, have you enhanced his life? So intoxication is just that, it is taking away your faculties for a period of time, but if you continuously do it, it'll take it away for your life. So you're taking away or subjugating your faculties for a little bit of pleasure or maybe a lot of pleasure, whatever, however you wish to describe it. But the important thing is you're taking a backward step with life because life can only be enhanced by sharpening and increasing our faculties, not by decreasing our faculties. Our ability to be active physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if this is in any way crippled, this means we are taking a backward step though there may be pleasure attached to it. So, I'm teaching them a way. If you sit here with your eyes closed, every day, I'm very proud of this now, there are millions of people, in the morning if they sit with their eyes closed for a few minutes, 
tears of ecstasy will flow, millions of people across the world. Yes, this is what needs to happen because you need to understand the greatest chemical factory, the most sophisticated chemical factory is right here. The question is only, if you are a great manager, you will produce what you want from this. If you are a lousy manager, you do wrong things, you get anxiety, you get something else, you get rubbish going on within you because you are misusing your chemical factory or you don't know how to manage your chemical factory. Every human being wants his life enhanced. If you don't show them proper ways to enhance, they will find shortcuts. See, a man who goes to the bar and a man who goes to a church or a temple or a whatever, they're seeking the same thing, they're trying to enhance their life. If you do not show them a proper way, they will take whatever ways are available on the street, that's all. That's why I'm saying it's not a moral issue for me, it is just that it sets you backward. You want to go forward, but it sets you backward. Let's talk about The Great Courses Plus because I've personally been really enjoying it. They have interesting lectures and courses from some of the best professors in the world, and a huge library of over 11,000 videos on just about everything that could possibly interest you from philosophy to psychology to even self-improvement. The course that really interested me was Cognitive Behavioral Therapy by Dr. Jason Satterfield. I'd say this is probably the number one way for most people to improve their lives, and I've actually struggled in the past to find good resources on CBT online. But the course on The Great Courses Plus is really good, so I'd personally recommend starting there. If that sounds good, start your free trial by clicking the link in the description below or going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash fightmediocrity.